Hey guys, it's Tracy from Nova Scotia Living and we just got done doing a video about picking up these tomatoes and I didn't want to make it a great big long video. So this is uh, one of many tomato videos I'm going to be having up. So, uh, yeah, we went down to this grandma's place store down in the little village that we live here. They have a giant garden and they have a surplus of tomatoes and they're going to have a whole bunch more for me again. This is 101 pounds of tomatoes. They charged me 30 bucks. Can you believe it? Straight out of the garden, tomatoes. Look at this. Thirty bucks. Look at this. So we're gonna start uh, washing these suckers up. This. Let's get hustling. Look at this. I see. What's that one look like? That one has a little nose, doesn't it? Hmm. <laughs> All right, Misha's gonna help me wash up some of these tomatoes. This is, I suppose, you can put it in a class of kids in the kitchen. She's gonna help prep these tomatoes for home preserving. So fill up the strainers and we'll rinse them off. First things first, we gotta always make sure our food's clean, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I can put the water in. Yeah, well, you get the strainers filled up. All right, got the water going. So you can start moving the tomatoes around a little bit because we gotta get them all washed off, okay? Then they'll be ready to go on to the next step. Mr. Mays wants to help a little bit too. He just wants to watch and supervise. You can do that, but make sure you, all the tomatoes get rinsed off, right? Mm hmm. Kids, get going. Are <laughs> those ones done? We got lots more to wash, Mish. <laughs> okay. Can you go get the girls, send the alarm that we need help in the kitchen? Yep. All right. Look at those beauties. It's a butte, Clark. It's a butte. So I'm setting up a workstation. Um, I do uh, my tomato sauce in slow cooker at first, the first step after prepping them all. So I have four slow cookers myself and I put the word out to neighbors and my dad I'm gonna swing by his house and pick up his slow cookers because I want to get these done as soon as possible. But here's one of the bellies of a slow cooker. I'm gonna get Mally to sit here and cut the tips off of the tomatoes um, and cut the tomato in half. Pass them to Mazaya who will be sitting here and she'll scrape out the innards. Now last year I did scrape out the innards I didn't find a big deal so I'm not gonna tell her it has to be perfect. And make sure we'll stand where I am. You need to go get out of that pretty white dress, Sia. I don't know, I guess pissed around. No, because we're going to be working with tomatoes. She does love herself dresses, but that pretty white dress, <laughs> it's a bad combination with tomatoes. Anyways, Misha will be sitting here so the girls can pass her the tomatoes to put into the crock pot. And Mr. Mays can sit right there and supervise the whole thing to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I so, right yeah. there? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right, guys, we're about to, I'm going to do the first one so the girls can see what I want them to do. Miss Mally, Misha's right there. Mr. Mays is behind me, so let me get uh, it situated. All right, so Mally has a sharp knife. Yeah, sit down on your bum, Misha. So what I want you to do, Mally, I find it's easiest just to cut the, the uh, stem off. And that's what that's going to be, that pan over there. I'll, that yeah, I'll just put it on here so no, we No, put it there. And then cut the tomato in half. And then after you cut them in half, pass them to Mazaya. You hold this one, Mazaya, mm -hmm. and this one. And what I want you to do is to try to scrape out some of the seeds. seeds. It doesn't have to be all out, but, just, uh, but you can use the spoon. And then you put the spoon in there. So, but you see that little green thing? You should try to get that out too. Yeah, there is a little green thing. Do I have to get the white out? No, but I'll get Mally to try to get that out before she passes it to you. That's the core. You don't want that because it'll be kind of bitter. Yeah. So, and when those are done, Zaya, you pass it to Misha. Mm -hmm. And Misha, you take this. And put it in here. And put it in there. Kinda. Oh, well, it's kind of watery in there. It is. You can actually cut these smaller, Mally. We'll cut it in half first. Maybe cut them like this in half. That one doesn't have it, but you can just cut that a little bit. Cut that in half. Whoa! Look what I'm doing, Mally. Like that. And make sure you make sure you put the compost in the thing. After I'm gonna have to wash my hands. So okay. All right. So you can pass those on to Mazara. Some of them are gonna be juicier than others. 
you can start doing those ones. I'll turn the light on. So yeah, guys, this is gonna be kind of like an assembly line. Um, like we did carrots last year. Do you remember we did carrots last year? Yep. Yeah. This time we're doing it with tomatoes. I am doing it with carrots. Yeah, we still have carrots canned in the basement, so I didn't get more carrots this year. Now I can see. You can't see. There's Mr. Mays. Is there such thing as carrot sauce? I, can I would say so. I've never made carrot sauce, but it, I'm sure it'd be tasty. Carrot dill sauce or something like that would be tasty. Because I did it like this. Yeah, because it wasn't a really big piece. Yeah. Do you want gloves, Mally? Are your hands getting itchy? Oh. I don't know if I have gloves. I'll have to look out. My hands are getting really itchy. My hands are getting really itchy. Let me show you the progress. So we have one slow cooker here, and this is gonna go down. Like I kind of overstuffed it, but it's gonna simmer down now. Uh, there's a little smaller one here, and two big kahunas there. And I got the call out for a few more slow cookers because <laughs> my kids were had a break and just shared a great big piece of watermelon with some spoons. <laughs> But we still have all of these tomatoes. All of these tomatoes. And I'm not, I have another box in there too. But they're little almost cherry tomatoes. I'm not going to try to can those up. The kids will eat those just like candy. So, yeah. What I do, you can do this on the stove top. I've done it on the stove top. It's just, I have a busy family. And if you're new and you don't know, I have a, um, teen children. Really, I have six children and sometimes more because we foster. Right now, we have eight children. And um, I got stuff to do, guys. I got laundry. It's almost 2 o'clock now. I need to start figuring what, out what I'm going to have for supper. I have to go pick up a couple kids in a little while. And I don't have time to watch a boiling pot all day long because you don't want to scorch tomato sauce or tomatoes at all in general. Uh, because all that work we just did would be for naught. You know what I'm saying? I do have a stock pot here of bone broth. It's been going almost 48 hours now. I'm going to be canning that up after. But yeah, busy days, busy days. So I'm going to get a few more stock pots or crock pots. I have them on high right now when this starts really, you know, everything's warmed up. I'm going to turn it down to low. And then I turn it like this. Because you don't want all the water to stay in that pot you want it to evaporate and I'll leave it on low until I go to bed and then I'll slick it or flick it to warm keep warm and I stir this a few times throughout the day I do and then tomorrow morning we'll be ready to bottle so easy so I'll bring you back in a little while when this is good all right I just took the lid off and it's piping hot so I'm just going to stir it around a little bit you can see all the juice that came out of that Juicy, juicy. I just stir it around. I probably do this every hour or so. That's all I do. But now that it's bubbling, I'm just going to turn it a little off kilter. Kick it down to low. And that's it. Let's go over and check these ones. I got some supper in the oven. I got to take off here in a minute. Just to run to tail my teenagers home so everything should be fine and we'll do the rest and do the same thing we just turn it down so I'll keep on trucking the last two weren't quite up to snuff 
there's not enough juice in there for me to turn it sideways yet. I want it really to start juicing before. Yeah, we turn it. But those are bigger crock pots. I'll just show you. I've got some giant chicken breasts, and I cut up some potatoes and onions, and put a little garlic powder, some salt and pepper, a little olive oil, and I'll just open up a home can thing of corn or peas or beans, and that's it. Supper and a snap. All right, guys, it's the next morning. I did my morning run, dropping babies off and my teenagers off for the first day of school. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like after sitting on Keep Warm all night. Ta-da! So it gets most of the liquid out. And I could have done this a lot quicker. I just, in my house, I just take my time and make the slow cookers do the work for me. Um, see, there's not much liquid left in there, but it's not dried out or anything like that. So, and I got all the rest of them are like that too. Beautiful, beautiful. It smells really good in here. Um, right now, what I would do if I wanted to add seasoning to it, I'd add it now. Uh, I'd add it now, and it's still warm. I unplugged it. I'm just going to let this cool down a little bit because we're going to put this in the food processor, and I don't want to do it when it's super hot. But you can add seasoning like garlic powder, onion powder, uh, oregano, or whatever you want to do now. I think I'm just going to do straight up plain sauce today, uh, maybe with a bit of salt, kosher salt. Uh, we'll see. Uh, because I like to doctor up my sauces when I'm cooking at the time. So, now for my morning coffee. Okay, guys. It's the next morning. I know I showed you what it looks like. I just moved everything over to the table. I got my kitchen's loud right now, guys. I have bone broth over there in the pressure canner. My dishwasher's going, so I'm hoping that you can hear me. Um, I shut these slow cookers off a while ago so they cool down a bit. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of the, well, the tomatoes and put them in my food processor and blitz them to smithereens. So it uh, incorporates some seeds and the skins and stuff. Because I forgot to mention yesterday, you can take the skins off your tomatoes and take out all the seeds beforehand. And I've done that before. It's a lot of work, but you can do it. It's not that hard to do. It's just a lot of work. But I don't mind the skins and I don't mind the seeds because I blitz it to smithereens and it just makes the sauce a little thicker. Some people might say uh, seeds make it bitter. I don't notice that at all. I really don't. But some people say that. Um, but you do your own research. I'm just wanted, I just wanted to show you how I make my tomato sauce ready to can. So uh, can you hear that? See over there? I've got two pressure canners going. My kitchen's kind of a, there's the slow cooker bodies, kind of a disaster area, but it's going to pay off in the end. So let's get started. guys that filled up almost three quarters of my 22 quart stock pot so I got my dishwasher loaded with um, jars we have to sanitize these jars because we can this in a water bath canner so after they're done in the dishwasher on the highest heat setting I'm gonna put them in the oven at uh, 215 for about 20 minutes and then we can start loading this up but before <laughs> I need to wait for the dishwasher to be done and I shut my pressure canners off I gotta wait for those to cool down um, and it's safe to open the lid, which won't be for about another half hour or so. And then I can move those pots off the stove. When those pots are gone, I'll put this sucker over there on the stove top and I'll just bring it up to, you know, it's starting to simmer. I don't wanna scorch the bottom. I don't wanna boil this or anything like that. I just want it to be at a good good heat and I might add a little bit, stu a little bit of stuff to it. So. I'll bring you back when all that commotion's done. All right, just put the jars in the oven. They're still piping hot from the dishwasher. I had to use my oven mitts. And we're just gonna put it down on, switch hands here. Uh, around 215. And I'll set it for 30 minutes. 
just need to make sure that they're nice and sterile because we're not pressure canning. You can pressure can tomato sauce. Um, I see both, both recipes. I've always just water bath canned it, but I know how to pressure can. So I thought I'll just do it with the water bath because not everybody's comfortable um, pressure canning. So yeah, look at that sauce, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I could have sauteed up some onions and mushrooms and all that stuff to put in there, but I'm not doing that today. I'll have more opportunities to do that. I am, however, going to add a little garlic to it and maybe just a little bit of sugar. Just It doesn't make it sweet, guys. It doesn't. It just kind of counterbalances. So, Oh, yeah. Let me bring my tripod over. I'm getting tired. I just fed the kids lunch. There's my lovely bone broth. All right, I just have this pot turned on uh, five because I want this to warm up because you don't want to put cold sauce into a hot jar because you're just asking for trouble. Um, so yeah, let me get the garlic. I was debating on whether making this um, two videos or one. I'm still not sure yet, but you guys will know when I see how long this is because we don't need to have an hour long video. I don't mind, I could jibber jabber all day, as I've said many times. You can season this however you want to season it. Um, but just to note, if you put meat in your sauce, because you can can it with meat, you have to pressure can it. You can't put meat in it and water bath can it. Um, I've never done that. I just because I haven't had the opportunity. If I have enough meat to do it, I usually am feeding my family with it then. But if for some strange reason I have a surplus of ground beef sometime, I might can up a bunch of chili, you know, easy to do. So I'm gonna bring this up. We'll wait till the 30 minutes is off. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sugar. It wasn't that much, guys, maybe a couple tablespoons, but it's a big pot. It's a big pot. So, yeah. Anyways, I'll bring you back when it's time to start bottling this stuff up. All right. I'm about to take those jars out of the oven. I uh, washed all the slow cookers. So, ready for the next batch. I dug out... Uh, two of my water bath canners over there put some water in it and turned them on high so they start to heat up and now I got to get the jars out and we'll start filling them up here we go all right guys let's do this so I'll add the salt I didn't add salt you can but if you do use salt, I recommend kosher salt or pickling salt because if you use iodized salt, whatever you're canning will turn brown and it's really not that appealing to look at. So, um, just I, I'll go over some things that you know some people might already know, but if you don't know, funnel, scoop, a magnet or a picker-upper. Um, yeah, you always, always have to check your jars before I would, I always check them before I wash them and sterilize them and stuff to make sure that there's no cracks or anything stuck in them because um, they're at risk of breaking in the canning process. So always make sure. Always sanitize when you're water bath canning. Uh, when you're pressure canning, you can just make sure they're very clean because the pressure canner will sanitize it for you. It gets so hot in there. Um, so what we're doing here, I'm just scooping it up until, I usually do it to the uh, bottom of the funnel. Ooh, that might be a little too much. Of course, leave it to me. The first time I do want to show you guys, I do it too much. Yes, and of course, there's no clean spoons. Let's see here. There's clean ones in here. Okay, that was a little too much, guys. Just like the bottom lip of the uh, jar. It should be good, it should be good. So, let me do one more. Hopefully I can get it on the ball, on the nose this time. 
Tomatoes is something very, very easy to can. Um, and it, the hardest part is prepping them, and it all depends on how, how far you want to take it. Like I say, if you want to take the skins off, I've done that. But then I, after I've done that a few times, I just tried it with the skins on and did the food processor, and it was perfect for me, so I don't even do that anymore. There we go. That's a good one. So um, I'll just always, 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 you have to debubble these th these jars. You don't want any air bubbles in there if you can help it. And you shouldn't use anything metal because that could scratch your jar. I use just the end of a wooden spoon, just shimmy it around in there a little bit. This smells so good, it really does. Fresh tomatoes. And these, uh, I know you see me, or no, you didn't see me. I can't remember if it's all the same video or not. Um, I got them right from the store downtown, which they just got them right from their garden. Right from their garden. And then gave me a hauler to go pick them up. So these are garden fresh tomatoes. And uh, we went and picked beans last night. I got a whole big banana box of them. We'll be doing those. So I'm feeling pretty uh, good about our harvest for the winter. And this sauce, you can transform it into pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce or uh, whatever you want to do. It works. So I'm going to keep, uh, well no, let me just put one in the canner for you so you can see the process. I'm a little scattered brain today guys. I got so much stuff going on. So this bowl is a bowl of vinegar. Just white vinegar. You can use hot water. My mom always just used white vinegar, so that's what I do. Um, and I got a clean tea towel, dishcloth, and you wipe the rim. You got to make sure there's nothing on that rim that will prevent this from sealing. And this will just make sure it's all cleared off. Wipe it good. There you go. Oh, and with um, tomato sauce. You add a little bit of lemon juice. Uh, for a jar like this, I add a tablespoon of lemon juice. And you can, in the book, it's, you know, put it in before. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to put cold lemon juice in a hot jar, so I always do it. Sometimes I do it in between, a, you know, while I'm adding a sauce or whatever. But a tablespoon of lemon juice. Oh, my goodness, that's squirting right out. There we go. I should have did that before I wiped the rim, so now I've got to wipe them again. Like I say, I'm scatterbrained. Do you guys ever have days like that? There. All right. Now the next step. You get a little... This is what this magnetic thing is for. Just for getting the lids that have been soaking in warm water. Oh, for heavens to Betsy. That have been soaking in warm water that loosens up that little red rim around there and helps it seal better. Put it on the jar. Put it on the jar. And get a fancy dancy little band. And you put it on fingertip tight. These jars are hot, so. But as hard as you can do with just your fingers. You don't need to wretch it like a cave woman. that. I'm going to wipe that one off because the little sauce went down the side. And then I just put those over into the canner. And I, uh, I don't know how many I'm going to get with this batch of tomatoes, but I still got a whole slew of them out there. Ooh. A whole freezer top full. They're sitting in boxes. That we need to chop up and put in the slow cookers. So, let me get these going and I'll bring you back when the canners are full. Okay, the first water bath canner is all loaded up. 
and you got to make sure that it's about an inch above the jars the water go comes above whereas in the pressure canner that's not how much water you put in you need to read your direction manual but water back canning needs to be about an inch above the top of your jars so the heat's on high we need to wait for this to come up to boil when it comes up to boil that's when we start to set our timer and we're going to let this boil in this water for 35 minutes so i'll show you when it starts boiling all right i think it's boiling we'll take a peek i only had um three jars that fit in this uh i didn't have enough sauce to fill it up but i did it in anyways to save me time oh yeah that's boiling so i'll set the timer i'll shut these jars off for 35 minutes and when this one comes up to boil I'll set it with my phone timer because that one's going to take a little bit longer so yeah now it's just the waiting game all right folks we're on the home stretch I'm telling you my kitchen is like a steam bath you see that steam coming off these pots well I'm telling you I'm getting a steam facial or whatever the heck you call it so this one is all done so we're just going to shut it off we take this off and we leave it in the pot for five minutes after that five minutes then we take it right out so i'll bring you back when it's time to take it out isn't that a beautiful sight though look at that bubbling i love it all right the timer's about to go off and then I'll start bringing them over. There it is. Wow, look at that, guys. I know you can't see real well, but I'll take up some, take some close-up pictures after. It looks beautiful. Now we just need to wait for the ping. I love that sound of the ping. So these are, are mainly quart jars. I have some pint jars. Or, no, I just have one pint jar. So, if I had used smaller jars, I would have uh, had a lot more jars, but it's all good in the neighborhood. This is getting me rolling on my tomato sauce goals for the winter. So I picked up 101 pounds of tomatoes so far. I told him I'd like another 100 pounds if he gets it. And we were just to the garden last night. And uh, they have a whack of them there. Some of them are still green, so he's going to call me when they're ready. And hopefully I can make it stretch for at least most of the winter. There. All right, that last one has about another five minutes left before I take the lid off. But when it's all done, um, I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll leave these on the table overnight and then take the bands off and make sure I wipe, wipe them down, mark them on top. When I made it, I'll just put September 17 and put them down in the cellar. It's all good. But it's so nice to look at for the evening every time I'll come out I'll just smile and I love waiting for that ping of the lid sealing so we'll be back all right guys it's all done all done at least that batch I'll get probably another batch of jars like this again I don't know how many more big jars I have but we'll see anyways they turned out beautiful I'm not bothering canning those little ones. The kids eat those just like candy. I'm not even joking. I'll come get a bowl full or a mug full and eat them. But isn't that pretty? So pretty, pretty. And uh, my bone broth over there. I do have a video on bone broth. If you guys want to see it, I'll put it in the description box down below. Turkey bone broth. And uh, just to check out. So yeah, we got lots more work to do. I've got supper in the oven, some chicken, some potatoes peeled where the heck did I put my pot oh it's in the sink filled up with water but all those slow cookers are going to be filled up with some fresh tomatoes and we'll do this all over again tomorrow fun fun anyways thanks for joining us today joining me today 
and uh, peace, love, and happiness. If you want to give this a whirl, uh, yeah, let me know how you make out. But I recommend doing some research. I just got out a couple of my books that I've used. Um, this was just one I, I, I did last year and the year before. You know what I mean? It's straightforward kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, let me know how you make out. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. See you tomorrow, guys.